All right, guys, so check it out. Today, I'm going to go over plyo progression drills that you can do to enhance your power production in your lower body. The objectives for the plyos are going to be to optimally progress the athlete to understand proper load and propulsion, so how to push off into the body naturally to create body awareness and core control. This is gonna help enhance their explosiveness throughout any range of motion. Whether you are a combat sport athlete or a field-based sport athlete, this will benefit you in the long run. Key points, we wanna make sure that our foot positioning is solid, midfoot, to the ball of the foot with that contact with a quick amortization phase, meaning that the time they hit the ground, they need to redirect force as fast as possible. Now our four forces that we're gonna be working towards while you do these plyo progressions and going into plyometrics is going to be shear force, distraction force, torque, and compression. Now, what this basically means is shear force is the muscles that are parallel or over the top of that are going to enhance the power production as you go through your jumping mechanics. For example, this would be like a quadricep muscle over a gastroc or the calf muscle, gastrocnemius. Distraction is gonna be something that you would do in a motion like a throwing motion or a jumping motion, typically seen in the shoulder or in the hip capsule. Torque, now torque is the turning effect of force on the body throughout that dynamic movement, right? So when we go to create that explosiveness, when we're going to jump off, we need to create torque so that we can stabilize and then produce that force. And compression, now compression, you guys know, compression is obviously compressing something. So when you're talking about compression in the forces that you do when you go to jump, you're going to compress the body, the bones, the joints, the soft tissue, the muscles, the tendons, ligaments, all of that when you go to land and redirect force. So these are the forces that are actually called upon when you do jumping, plow metrics, whatever the case. This is what we are doing with the body. Now let's get into the plow metric progressions that you can do to enhance power production. Let's do it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is teach the athlete how to accept load or basically absorb force coming down. So we're gonna start off very simple with a drop down. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna raise his arms and his heels off the ground. So now he's in triple extension. And then on my go, he's gonna drop down into position. Drop, good. Now he's accepting that load, right? He's absorbing force. We're gonna do this about five repetitions. So raise up, drop, good, right? After he's done with his five, then we're gonna move on to getting the feet off of the ground. And now he's creating more force coming down to where he has to absorb that load. Go, good. Oh, drop down. Good, slightly come off the ground and then stick the landing. Now what we're trying to look for, or at least what you're trying to look for if you're doing this, is we don't want to see knee valgus, so we don't want the knees to kick in. We don't want the feet to collapse. We want a good stable base. We want the hands behind so that again, he's ready to redirect force if we go to jump off of this movement, which we will in later time. So again, what you can do, two sets of five repetitions. Start off with just going from the balls of the feet back down to midfoot. Then from there you can jump or drop with the feet coming off of the ground and then landing in that same position. All right, the next one that we're gonna do is a drop down single leg lunge out, right? Now what we wanna do is we wanna assess that foot contact and placement on the ground. So you're gonna raise up into that same position in triple extension. We have hips, knees, and ankles extended. From there, he's gonna drop down into a split stance position. We're looking at foot positioning, making sure that he's not wobbling, he's not moving around too much. He's stable when he goes and absorbs that force. You can do five repetitions on each leg. Good thing about the split stance is now we're loading up that single leg component so he has to maintain stability on both legs but in that split stance there's a little bit more tension on the front leg all right now we're going to go into the non-counter movement quarter jump now we're going to assess that deceleration as he goes to land and we want to maintain an athletic position and rate of force control as he goes to land off of that quarter jump now again with the quarter jump you're not going to extend the hips so you can get out get down into position drive off the ground and then stick the landing Make sure when you're doing a non-counter movement, you wanna pause for two to three seconds so you get no stretch reflex and make sure that you're not wobbling or going into any type of movement before you go into a concentric jump. If the athlete displays adequate control, good positioning, and greater force production out of this position, then you can progress into the next step. You wanna do these about five repetitions to make sure that you assess proper movement control. So now we're going into a non-counter movement jump through the frontal plane. So now we're just assessing the ability to actively control the feet. So no excessive pronation on the foot and or supination on the feet either. 
We want to make sure we're in alignment. We're not valgusing the knees. He's understanding where he is in space, so proper proprioception. He has good kinesthetic awareness, and he's producing force, but he's also absorbing that force too as well. Five reps each side, making sure that they are showcasing good control on the landing and on the force production. All right, now we're gonna go into a non-counter movement through the transverse plane. So he's gonna sit in its position, go ahead and rotate 90 degrees, and then land in that same good position, right? We wanna control our landing and wanna control body awareness so you don't over-rotate or under-rotate. Three to five repetitions on each side. All right, so the next one, now we're gonna go ahead and ramp up the amplitude. So now we're going higher, we're gonna put more intent and intensity into the actual jump. Still starting off on a non-counter movement, we're gonna go through that sagittal plane, so straight up and down, full vertical jump, land with good foot placement, and maintain your positioning as you come down. With these higher amplitude jumps, you can lessen the overall volume and hit three repetitions through, and as long as they're showcasing great positioning and force production, you can progress this going further. So now that we mastered the non-counter movement, now we're gonna go into our counter movement using our arms and getting that stretch reflex out the bottom to create more overall power production. So now what Jack's gonna do, he's gonna raise his arms up, we're gonna get in that triple extension, he's gonna drop down a position real quick and then redirect force up and making sure that he's getting quality landing. The goal here is to make sure we're absorbing force with proper foot placement and overall body awareness while we're up in the air. Okay, well now we're gonna move on to horizontal force displacement. We're gonna go into a broad jump. You're gonna go non-counter movement on the broad jump. So we're gonna bring the leg, arms back. And this time, instead of going vertical, getting triple extension, now we're gonna work on getting out. So we wanna make sure that our heels are staying low, our hips get into full extension, and then driving the feet back into position so that he can land on two feet, and again, with everything stacked as he goes to land. Since we are in a higher amplitude, he is trying to get out as far as he can. We're gonna go ahead and do three repetitions here. Counter movement, broad jump. Now all he's doing is getting that stretch reflex, gonna drive his arms down into position and faster down, faster up objectives. We wanna make sure that as he comes down, he's rapidly firing those arms. And as he comes back through, he's gonna drive his hips through, get off the ground, keeping the heels low, try to get as far out as possible. Since this is higher amplitude, we're gonna go ahead and stick to three repetitions. If everything changes, checks out good, then we can move on to the next phase of the jumping progression. So now we're gonna move on to a single leg series since we are able to do those double legs. And he's gonna go to a single leg vertical tuck jump. As he goes, he's gonna get into a single leg RDL, sitting the hips back, holding position, non-counter movement three count to disperse any of that kinetic energy or a stretch reflex. And then from there, a straight concentric action, he's gonna drive up vertically and then pull his knees to his chest, landing appropriately with no valgus and no compensation throughout the feet in the kinetic chain. Now we're gonna go ahead and go into that horizontal force displacement, single leg only. We'll start off on a non-counter movement, recreating that fast twitch or that rate of force from a static to a dynamic. So he's gonna hold for three seconds, explode out of there, and then land on two feet. Now we're gonna go into a counter movement jump where we're gonna get that stretch reflex on that single leg, stretching that hamstring, and then driving out into that horizontal force, making sure that we're getting both feet planted on the ground as you go to land, and making sure that we're getting great force production and overall power throughout that single leg. You can do three to four repetitions on each leg going forward. This is our final phase of just our low level plow progressions. Then you can start to work into the higher level multi-directional and explosive power movements with box jumps and so on. All right guys, so there you have it. Plyo progressions or plyo metrics that you can do to enhance power production through the ground and then increase your performance as a combat sport athlete or a field-based sport athlete. Like I said, this will benefit you. So check it out. Make sure you have your progression set alone. Line. Do not go to the next level until you have optimal range of motion and control and positioning of your body as you go through the motion. All right, make sure you subscribe to the notification, hit the like button, and comment if you have any questions. I'll see you again next time. Peace.